Hey there! In this tutorial, we're going to look at how you can add a pre-push hook to validate your ktlint rules using the ktlint check command. Now the first thing that we need to do is make sure that our project is initialized as a git repository. So for me, I'm going to open up my project here and I'm just going to type git init. And now I have a valid git repository. So now if I open up to my project directory, I'll see that I have a dot git directory within that folder. And if I scroll down here to the hooks subdirectory, I'll see that I have samples of the different types of git hooks that are available to us. It's within this hooks directory that we're going to add our new pre push git hook. So now let's go ahead and add that new pre push script. So I'm going to open up a text editor here. And the first thing I'm just going to do is save the file. And I want to make sure that I navigate to the right directory. So in this case, I'm navigating to my ktlint directory. And then I want to at save this under the .git directory. So I'll select .git and I'll go to hooks. And then I'm just going to save this as pre-push and hit save. So now that I have this new script, I'm going to copy the script into it and then we'll walk through the different elements of this script. So here we have our script. And so the first line is probably going to look familiar to you if you've done any shell scripting. So this is just indicating that this is a valid shell script. And then I have a comment here indicating a blog post, which you can turn to for some additional information about this type of pre push hook. The next line, we're just going to echo out to the console some useful type of message. So in this case, we're saying just checking the code formatting. Next up, we're going to actually run the ktlint check command. And to do that, we'll just add dot slash gradle w app colon ktlint check. So this is going to run ktlint check for our app module. Then after that, we're going to get the status environment variable. And then we're just going to check that uh, property. We're going to see if status is zero, then no issues were found to go ahead and return successfully. Otherwise, we are going to print out to the console that there are some formatting issues and exit with a unsuccessful status. And really, that's it. So we can go ahead and save this. And we can return back to our code now. So now we can test this out. If we type git push, we'll see this output right here. So first of all, it's saying everything is up to date. There's nothing to push. But in orange, as a warning, it's saying the dot git slash hook slash pre push hook was ignored because it's not set to executable. So you may need to manually ensure that your new script is marked as executable. You can do that using the following command. So we say Jamon a plus x and then the script name. So in this case, it's dot git slash hook slash pre push. Once we've run that command, if we type git push once again, we'll see it first says check code formatting, and then we're getting our output here. So in this case, we see that we obviously have some formatting issues. So if we fix up these issues real quick, and then we run dot slash gradle w kt lint check, we'll see now that we are successful. So we can add all of these, fix issues, and commit them. And now if we run git push, once again, we'll see checking code formatting. This time, however, ktlint check succeeded, which means that that push hook succeeded, and it went ahead and pushed that code up to our remote repository. So by adding this pre push check to validate ktlint, we can prevent ourselves from pushing any code that doesn't match our code format settings. This is really useful if you have ktlint enforced by your CI build and you don't want to push any code that you know is going to break any of those enforced rules. So hopefully this has been a useful look at how you can add a pre push git hook to run ktlint check and validate your ktlint code formatting rules. 
Let me know if you're using this in your projects, and we'll see you in the next video.